Hi everyone, Scott with Cyberscribe.org, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through setting up uh, Zen Server as your uh, bare metal hypervisor, your virtualization solution. Uh, other similar ones that you're probably aware of are VMware ESXi, Windows Hyper-V. So Zen here is open source. It was previously owned by Citrix, which I guess a couple years ago, uh, you know, opened it up as we can see here. So how I got to Zen in the first place was that I was using, uh, I've previously used ESXi in the past uh, for multiple virtualization servers and uh, this time I had you know I had my uh, my hardware everything was uh, installed ready to go built and I go to install ESXi it gets through however far it got through the install process but it came to a point and said well we don't detect any network interface cards uh, we can't proceed with the installation so it didn't find my NICs uh, and that's happened in the past to me as well so I didn't look too deep into it uh, you know I didn't have I didn't find maybe there is a solution around that to just use like a generic NIC or something but for me I don't really need uh, all the I just need basic virtualization here uh, just to hold virtual machines so uh, looking around I came to Zen and I just you know tried that and it worked so it found my NICs that's how I got to use Zen server as opposed to ESXi so just be aware if you are trying to use ESXi and it's giving you problems with finding the NIC well check out Zen because that's how I got to it so basically what you're gonna do is you go to zenserver.org I'll put this uh, link at the bottom and you just download the ISO download the management console another uh, thing in the uh, plus side for Zen is there is I believe a Linux management console so just be aware that that's out there too but I'm just using the Windows just for my situation here so like I said you go download the ISO put it to a boot disk or USB install it onto your server connect to it and uh, you'll need a monitor in this case you know for this uh, install and what you'll see when you finish your install is just uh, this basic like uh, configuration screen so you'll have your IP that was given to your uh, that you gave to your server and you'll have your uh, uh, usernames and passwords and things like that really there's some things that you can do on this but the management for your virtualization server you're gonna want to use Zen Center and not this so uh, just be aware there is a local command shell you can do stuff on this but like I said we're not we're just using this to start virtual machines get them working and uh, not do nothing uh, too outrageous or anything like that so you get it installed you get like this IP information basically you can just uh, disconnect that monitor and uh, you know use it as a headless server as it was meant to be used so the Windows Management Console is Zen Center that's right here and what you would do is a couple different places but you can add a server what you do is just add that IP that you found from your install put in your credentials and you will then connect so if you're looking at this screen it's not much different than an ESXi screen and not much different than a Windows Hyper-V screen. Uh, I'm not using virtualization for load balancing or high availability or anything like that. I have virtual machines that I want to just run and you know work with that way. So I'm not looking for too much of uh, of you know like deep uh, virtualization uh, elasticity or something like that. I'm just looking you know so for my purposes one is as good as the other really but a uh, couple differences is number one on the good side Citrix uh, the Zen server did find my NICs where ESXi didn't so there you go and uh, so that's good um, not so good is it uses about a gig of memory ESXi I believe is using about 175 megs so just be aware it's not a huge deal but it is something notable so uh, there's that and uh, one other thing that I, I noticed is when I was uh, installing ESXi before I was able to install the operating system to a USB and just like free NAS boot uh, from that USB and then use the disks as uh, storage or you know virtualization uh, you know storage of the virtual machines I wasn't able to do that here again I didn't look too deep into it and there might have been a way around it might have been a way to do it but 
for my situation, I had a couple hard disks just laying around. Uh, older one, this is what the uh, operating system boots off of, and uh, data one and data two. These are my uh, these are you know hosts for my virtual machines here. So uh, just be aware. Like I said, it might be a little bit extra work to boot off of the USB if you have that ability uh, in with Zen server here. So uh, there's that, and really not much else. I mean, if you're looking, there's the same kind of tabs uh, that you see in ESXi. I've used Hyper-V a little bit, but ESXi a lot more. You know, you have your graphs and stuff like that. You have your storage pools and things like that. But it's not, uh, you know, it's not so very different that you absolutely must use one or or the other. Uh, like I said, for my purposes, for for testing and things like that. Uh, I mean, you know, my NICs both were found, which is very good for me because I have, you know, this is my uh, my home uh, network and. Uh, this next one is for my lab, so it goes from one to the other. That was the idea. And uh, like I said, ESXi just didn't find either of these, so that's why I'm here. And uh, so that's good. And, uh, you know, other than that, I mean, I could go on and talk more about it, but I mean, if you know a little bit about virtualization, what you're looking at here is not really new to you. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Like I said, uh, if you're having issues with VMware trying to do some uh, virtualization, well, try Zen because you might have a little better experience with it. So that's all I had for this video, and stay tuned for future videos.